This is going to be a video uh, for the chemistry of the atmosphere for AQA GCSE combined science. So what we're going to do is we're going to firstly go back and look about a billion years ago uh, when the earth was particularly hot. Okay, Now the earth was very hot at that time uh, because there was a lot of volcanic um, activity going on um, and the earth was particularly early in its development. So all of these volcanoes that existed were giving out a large proportion of varying gases. Okay, Now these gases consisted of things like nitrogen, uh, methane, large proportions of carbon dioxide, as well as some water vapour. Now notice I've said water vapour, I haven't said water, because we're not dealing with liquid water here, we're only dealing with water in its vapour form, because the earth was so hot that all of that water that was being given out is in vapour form. Uh, remember the term we use when we refer to water in vapour um, is steam. Now all of these gases that were being produced built up and formed the atmosphere. Now that early atmosphere of the Earth would be similar to what today we would talk about so for Mars, Venus for example. Now because those gases were all up in the atmosphere, what happened was that formed the greenhouse effect. Okay, And that uh, contributed to the increasing or the increased temperature at the time. Now the greenhouse effect we're going to just quickly go through to make sure that we all understand what we're referring to uh, when we talk about it. Now the greenhouse effect is where you've got the earth, okay, and surrounding the earth you then have your atmosphere. Now these are the, uh, this is the atmosphere and then you've got the gases that are building up within it. Now what would normally happen is infrared radiation, so heat radiation from the sun, would come in, okay, and it would be coming through and some of it would be absorbed into the earth okay and then as it would then leave some of it would get out and escape now the problem with greenhouse gases is that they build up a layer in the atmosphere that means that as the heat or the infrared radiation goes to leave it can't and what happens is it gets trapped in this layer and this layer gets warm and then radiates that heat back down and so because it's radiating that heat back down, the earth then gets warmer. It's important to remember that the greenhouse effect, I've just noticed I've not done that up there, the greenhouse effect, okay, is a good thing. It's what makes our planet at the moment um, inhabitable. It's what keeps us warm. It's the enhanced greenhouse effect that you hear about a lot in the media where they refer to the fact that obviously we're, we're contributing to the enhanced greenhouse effect which is leading to global warming etc. Now what happened was over time the earth then slowly began to cool down and as it began to cool what that meant was that the water that existed at the time so that's my water I've got in its steam form, it was able to then condense. When I say condense, I'm referring to the fact that it is changing from a gas into a liquid. So we're going from steam into liquid water. As it then condensed, that meant that we then formed the oceans. Okay, And the oceans at that time, because we had a huge amount of carbon dioxide, some of that carbon dioxide then dissolved into the oceans. And that meant that there was a slight decrease in carbon dioxide levels. Now, what then happened was that because water was now available in liquid form, okay, at around sort of 2.7 billion years ago, we then started to have algae form. Now, algae was a very basic form of plant life. And because it existed, it meant that photosynthesis could start happening. About sort of the next billion years after that, you also had then just your normal sort of plants that we think about now. OK, so less, more complex types of plants, green plants, then also began to form. So because they formed, they then led to photosynthesis. Now, photosynthesis. So we're going to come up here somewhere. Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the process whereby carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is reacting with water 
in the presence of sunlight and it's then forming glucose and it's forming oxygen and it was the key thing here it's this oxygen that's being formed that then sort of really as well as the carbon dioxide being taken in had the biggest effect on the earth's atmosphere at that time so what happened was all of that that was given off okay meant that the o2 levels so the oxygen levels increased so they increased and at the same time because the carbon dioxide was being taken in that then decreased because we had an increase in the amount of oxygen level that meant that things like uh, animals birds fish more complex life okay so from the o2 we ended up with more complex life evolving now that complex life if we were thinking about it as sort of spurring off and looking at something slightly different that complex life then went on to form uh, well to die and then form things like so they die which then leads to things like uh, fossil fuels being formed coal oil gas now as that all then happened sort of if we think back about sort of 200 million years ago we then ended up with an atmosphere that actually is almost relatively the same as our current atmosphere today it hasn't hugely changed very much we ended up with an atmosphere that consisted of a large proportion and we're talking around 80%, approximately 80% of nitrogen. You then had approximately 20% of oxygen. And then you've got less than sort of 1% of just other gases, which are things like carbon dioxide. So e.g. CO2. Okay. Now the nitrogen built up because it was originally being given off by the volcanoes. And it's relatively unreactive. It formed nitrogen-based compounds but a large proportion stayed as gas in the atmosphere. The oxygen built up to around 20% because of the photosynthesis. CO2 levels then significantly dropped, again, because of the photosynthesis and also because some of it was being locked away in the oceans of the world. That is kind of the whole of the chemistry of the atmosphere in a nutshell. Of course, in addition to this, there are other factors which have then led to our atmosphere slightly changing in today's current atmosphere. That would be things like looking at combustion, burning of fossil fuels, various things like that, which I'm going to do in a separate video. But that is the sort of the story as we go on. We had a very hot earth that had lots of volcanoes releasing those gases. That was all then uh, contributing to the greenhouse effect. The earth began to cool down. And it's important that you recognise there that the earth is cooling down at that stage. Yeah, so the earth gets colder and it's only because it gets colder that the uh, water then condenses, forms the oceans because the oceans have formed. Plants and basic life, algae, uh, begins to form. They photosynthesize, which then leads to an increase in oxygen levels, a decrease in carbon dioxide levels. More complex life begins to evolve and we end up with our current atmosphere as it exists today. <laughs>